If you remember way back when, when the Off the Rope show started, and I used to have all those posters in the background, there was Austin, there was The Rock, there was Jericho, and then there was Mankind. There was a reason for that. You know, those are some of the biggest stars of that great era of the WWF at the time. And when it came to Mick Foley, I have a tremendous level of respect for him. I always will. That will never change. I always feel like the company in particular has done a lot to try and diminish him and not give him the props and the due that he so richly deserves. I think a lot of the fans understand this and appreciate this. The company, for political reasons or what have you, just likes to fuck with this guy. And I don't really get it. Because, to me, the measure of a great performer is, in a lot of cases, when they can be that Swiss Army Knife type of utility guy that you could do all these different types of things with. And also, do they make the other people that they work with better? And when you talk about Swift's Army Knife in terms of versatility, being able to work as four different characters, from Cactus Jack and Do Love to Mankind to Mick Foley. You know, Mick Foley was that dude, man. And you talk about that versatility, working face, working heel. You talk about the style of wrestling. You talk about the people that he made better because he worked with them. Like, I think back to when he first came to the company in 96, he got a lot out of Taker. That was at a point in time where Taker, frankly, was kind of languishing, if you remember. It wasn't the best of Taker's time in WWF, for sure. Mankind comes along, and they have a boiler room brawl, and they do all this stuff, and you got something more out of Taker. Later on down the road, Mankind being associated with Kane helped Kane out quite a bit. You know, it gave new life to Paul Bearer. You look at some of the work he did in particular with The Rock in Triple H and later on down the road, guys like Randy Orton, what more do I need to fucking say? Mick Foley was easily one of the most important guys of the Attitude Era. Vince McMahon was number one, and let's never get that twisted. It's probably then Austin 2, Rock 3, and Foley's on that Mount Rushmore of the Attitude Era from my, per from my perspective. Because... He made so many people better through association with him. Like even back in 96, working with Shawn Michaels. It took Shawn Michaels, I felt, to a different level. So in a lot of ways, from a pure wrestling standpoint, I worship the ground Mick Foley works on, walks on. The dude's a legend to me. And in terms of his work and the, the, all the good that he had in his career, you know, you're not going to be able to say a whole lot of bad things about it without me saying something back to your face. So I always respect the dude. I've always felt he was a very um, grounded guy. He wasn't too full of his own BS. He was a mark, but he wasn't that type of Bret Hart mark, if you know what I mean, where he was so caught up in his own bullshit that he started to believe his own bullshit. You know, I always felt Rick McFoley had that realness about him, that genuineness about him. He was the type of guy you're in the neighborhood and he's the cool dad. Or in your family, he's the cool uncle that you kind of wish was your dad. You know, and the guy that I've always felt was honest and all these other things. So, loads of respect for Mick Foley. And that will never change. However, my perspective on him is starting to change just a little bit. And just based off of some of the things that he said recently, you know, he was a wrestling fan going years back. So he was a mark. And pretty much everybody in the business, especially now, they're the biggest fucking marks of all. We're all marks, though, when it comes to wrestling. Even if you say you hate wrestling, come on here and comment on this video. Guess who's the mark? If nothing else, you're the mark for me because you decided to come on here and comment on the video. There you go. But I don't know when Mick Foley became such a raging, screaming idiot, Mark. This shit's getting carried away. This goes back to a couple of years ago when Daniel Bryan wasn't in the freaking Royal Rumble and Mick Foley's getting so butthurt, pissed, and upset. That he sits there and goes out in his backyard and freaking smashes a TV with, what, a baseball bat? I mean, Jesus Christ. I get kind of what he was getting at there, and I get that he was trying to be an outlet or this or that. But that was some really Mark fucking behavior if there ever has been. And I would expect for somebody like a Mick Foley, who at times, yes, knows what it's like to kind of get screwed over by the business, but also understanding how the business works... To not sit there and act in such a childish, petulant, Daniel Bryan is the best motherfucker in the world type of way. But there he is doing that. But especially recently, 
as apparently he's back in the really good graces of the WWE again, and they're doing the reality show. His daughter's trying to get a career in the business going for herself. His son's a creative assistant for WWE. He's got the Holy Foley show. He's on Raw as the general manager. Some of the shit that's coming out of his mouth and via his social media devices lately is just really frustrating to me. Because to me, it's a guy that I would hope should know better. But he's just turned into one of the biggest marks that I fucking know. And, and it's, it's so sad. You know, like I go back to SummerSlam. And yeah, you had some of the knuckleheads sitting there talking about Seth Rollins and Finn Balor's uh, match. And not talking about the match, but actually talking about the title. And chanting about the title and shitting on the title. And Mick Foley's sitting there calling those people selfish idiots and how dare they disrespect Seth Rollins and Finn Balor, to which I say a couple of things. Number one is maybe Seth Rollins and Finn Balor should be better at their job and give those fans no reasons to be worried about the ugly design of that hideous-ass title. Number two, number two, you can't sit there and get mad at the fans for hijacking shit when you were one of them a couple of years ago trying to hijack shit over Daniel Bryan not being in the fucking Royal Rumble. You know, it's just, it, it's just that's the type of shit you'd expect from the marks outside of the business to say, how dare you disrespect these guys? No. Tell those dudes to be fucking better. And yeah, you're always going to have fucking idiots chanting that. Shit. But you're also going to have these idiots that chant after a freaking headlock, this is awesome, this is awesome, when it's fucking stupid. Get over it. You would think a guy that did so many crazy things to help the wrestling business over the years wouldn't get so butthurt over a few fans chanting about the ridiculous hideousness of the fucking new Universal title. Who cares? And if these guys are good enough and your show is good enough, at the end of the day, the fans aren't going to care about that ridiculously hideous fucking title. I mean, then you've got the shit when Amit Alassane from ESPN was making fun of Kevin Owens' eight-year-old son being happy because his dad won the world title, talking shit about wrestling and this and that. And there's Mick Foley getting mad about the shit and getting all butthurt about the shit. Dude, you're pushing 50, aren't you? Don't you fucking know that people have always been saying this shit about the wrestling business and will continue to do so? I mean, come on. Again, that's the shit you would expect the marks outside of the business to say, but it's actually the marks inside of the business like Mick Foley and so many others that are saying this dumb shit and getting all fucking butthurt. When did we become such a set of fucking pussies? Grow a set. For the guy that used to talk about testicular fortitude, grow a set of nuts on your sack. Jesus Christ. Fucking who cares? So this dude at freaking ESPN says this shit when most people don't even know who the fuck he is anyways. And frankly, the only reason he's working at ESPN is because newsflash, he wasn't good enough at his fucking job in the NBA no matter how much ESPN tries to fucking spin it. Because if he was good at his job... In the front offices in the NBA, I guess where he'd still be working in the fucking NBA. So who gives a fuck what he says? What the fuck does he know? This is probably the same jackass that goes and washes the real house whores of Atlanta or Orange County or whatever the fuck. All those stupid ass reality shows. Keeping up with the cunt clan. Oh, because that's real, right? Let's talk about Kimye. Oh, fuck off. And he's sitting there tweeting his support to CM Punk. And I got respect for him. Oh, fuck that respect shit, Mick. You want to talk about the beating that he took? Talk about all the beatings you took over the fucking years. What CM Punk did was no more or less courageous than what the fuck you did throughout your career. All the shit you used to do with Terry Funk in Japan. All the shit you used to do in the fucking Hell in a Cell getting thrown off of the top of it. Going through the top of it. And all the other crazy crap getting speared by Edge through a fucking flaming table at WrestleMania where you burned your scrotum? Fuck CM Punk. And fuck this whole shit that we gotta respect him. Okay, $500,000 to get my ass kicked for two minutes. I used to get my ass kicked all the time as a little twerp in grade school and middle school by kids that were much bigger than me fucking bullies, and I didn't get a fucking penny. And what little bunch money I fucking had used to get taken out of my fucking pockets. What he did is not courageous. It's a circle jerk and a waste of fucking time. So they're tweeting your support. Tweeting your support ain't bringing them fucking back. 
I mean, Jesus Christ. And then one fan's talking about the fact that, you know, we're talking about things changing, things staying the same. He's talking about, oh, Mick Foley's back. There's more grain in his beer, and there's 4 million fewer viewers. And it's actually a funny comment. And then here's Mick Foley talking about it being a Debbie Downer, talking about, oh, 16 years later, you know, name another show that's carried on every week with no repeats. Um, It's called the Nightly News. They air every single night, 365 days a year. So WWE, longest weekly episodic television show. Technically, you look at the nightly news on channels like ABC, NBC, CBS. They go daily. So let's come off of that shit. Now let's not change the topic and the fact that the shit sucks. And that's why fewer people are watching it. It's kind of a funny comment. Get over it. And then he's getting mad at people for bitching about the finish to Sheamus and Cesaro. Talking about if you didn't like that, then you're not a real fan of wrestling. What the fuck? That's the shit I expect people to say to me years ago when I would talk about something CM Punk doing wasn't very good or something Daniel Bryan did was lame. Or this guy and it was fucking lame. Or this story being lame. Or the streak ending being fucking lame. I don't expect that to come from a WWE Hall of Famer, multiple time world champion, one of the biggest stars of the Attitude Era, one of the guys that I respect the most in the history of the professional wrestling business. For his understanding of the psychology of the business. For the understanding about the bigger picture and that it's not just about him. For the guys that he helped along the way and all the great television and great matches and great shows that he was a part of. Now he's questioning people's fandom if they don't like the lame-ass finish to Sheamus and Cesaro. Oh, Mick. What the fuck happened? When did you become such a raging glory hole, Mark, for the fucking WWE yourself and the business? Now, maybe... Like mentioned, referenced earlier, it has something to do with trying to, you know, keep in good graces with the WWE. You've got the Holy Foley show, so you're getting paid out there. You know, your family's getting paid out there. Noel's trying to get into the damn company, the damn business. So you're trying to not do anything that potentially submarines her and sabotages her. I get that. I get that your son's a creative assistant, and you're not trying to create any heat for him backstage, knowing how fickle the people in WWE can fucking be and how stupid they can be sometimes. I understand that you don't want to make the path any more difficult for him. You want to help him out. I get all that, and I understand it. And from a dad's perspective, I, I get your rationale and your logic here. You know, but you could do all of that and not be such a raging freaking mark for this shit. Holy Christ. Like, there's always one thing that frustrates me about professional wrestling. Is it's always talk about how the fans are the ones that get butt hurt. It's the fans that take this shit too seriously. It's the fans that get too emotional about this crap. When it couldn't be further from the truth, it's the boys and girls in the business that are the fucking true violators and perpetrators of this. They're the ones that are the whiniest bitches. They're the biggest pussies. They're the ones that are the biggest complainers. The biggest crybabies. I mean, my God, Mick. You should have thick skin. You of all people should have really thick skin. I know at times you have a tendency to get a little emotional, but Jesus quiet Christ. Maybe you need to go see Brock and get some of those estrogen blockers. I don't know when you became such a mark, but please. I, I miss the old Mick Foley that spoke with some logic and some reason and with some damn sense. Like he knew the real deal and what was going on. I don't like this Mick Foley that tweets about Santa Claus and fucking talks about how people aren't real fans if they don't like a wishy-washy Cesaro Sheamus finished at a second-rate fucking WWE Raw pay-per-view. I always have love for Mick, and I always respect him. I just don't know what happened and what made him become such a raging fucking mark. But the truth is, he probably always has been, and I just didn't realize it, and maybe he just didn't allow it to fully show until now.